uh, in Waku, of course, the topic on uh, coup d'etat. So in your perspective, given what is happening across Africa now, uh, what can, well, what advice can you uh, give to the military already in control on how they can actually uh, uh, work? Because you know that uh, the, some of these countries actually witnessing coup d'etat uh, have been uh, placed under the African Union sanctions and, and we see also some part of the international community uh, reacting uh, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the latest development in Gabon and elsewhere. So what is the, the, the solution for the military to actually uh, redefine the uh, the political scene in uh, these African countries that have witnessed uh, this revolution and uh, military takeovers to ensure uh, that they do not uh, repeat uh, the mistakes of predecessors. Uh, you know, some countries that, that have witnessed some uh, coup d'etat uh, today without a former uh, government. And of course, we also know that political wrangling or wrangling after a coup d'etat is also an aspect of uh, that will breed uh, instability uh, in any country. So what do, do you have to say? What, can, what is the take home <coughs> message? Uh, yes, Clarice, uh, let me begin by saying this. Um, first and foremost, what is happening, especially in Francophone Africa, it's simply saying the status quo is not sustainable it's not acceptable, not continue. That is what, that is the direct message that this military takeover is saying. Again, the status quo, what currently exists as we know it, will not continue. Number two, what would have happened, Clarice, and ladies and gentlemen, and everybody listening to us is that if we have regional blocks, international community constitution of regional blocks, that have the autonomy and the legitimacy, they would have been able to contain this and bring this under control. But the problem is that the international community that is supposed to handle these kind of things does not by itself has the legitimacy to go in there and do anything. Number, for example, let's take the Semag region where Gabon, for example, belongs. The Semag region constitutes of Cameroon, Gabon, uh, Chad, Congo, Brazzaville, Equatorial Guinea, and Central African Republic. Each of these countries has changed its constitution to make it possible for the incumbent to rule almost indefinitely. So number one, none of these countries have has the moral authority to go in there and say, let's condemn this country, let's make sure that civilian rule is instituted or given or uh, reinstituted because they themselves are going through a similar quagmire and a mess. Number two, from a security perspective, none of these countries has the security apparatus and the ability to go in there and do anything like what ECOWAS is trying to do. Why? If you look at Cameroon, Cameroon is facing the crisis in the north with Boko Haram and they are not able to contain that. They're facing the crisis in the Northwest and the Southwest with Ambazonia rebels. They are not able to contend that. If you look at Chad, Chad is going through a routing, a very difficult situation right now. And they're not able to agree among themselves on when the next election should stand. We have the, uh, the son of the former president holding on tight to power. So from a security perspective, that country itself has nothing to offer. You look at Congo Brazzaville is the same thing, changing of constitution and political instability going on in that country. If we look at Central African Republic, a couple of weeks ago, we heard it. They did a referendum and they changed their constitution given uh, the president of that country almost unlimited terms of him to run to power. If you look at Equatorial Guinea, they did the same. They changed their constitution and Otwajera Obiangemba can rule as long as he can. So. None of the countries in the Semag region that make up the regional bloc has the moral authority, political authority, security apparatus to do anything on what is happening. On the contrary, if you look at ECOWAS, which is another regional bloc, 
ECOWAS that is being controlled or being manned by Nigeria and all of us, teleguided by Nigeria, wanted to intervene. But what stopped them? Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, they gang up together and they said, hey, look here, if you intervene in Niger, we are going to be on the path, we are going to back the junta, we're going to come in and fight you. So what that tells me that those three countries are able to stand up to some sort of imperialism, other countries coming in there. So what I'm trying to explain here is the fact that if you have countries that have the regional autonomy and the independence and the capacity to stand against imperialism, some of these things will stop. But as we speak, they do not. They do not. And unfortunately, as we speak today, I know people say we shouldn't blame, but we know where the problem is coming from. France, just a couple of days ago, had a meeting with Emmanuel Macron, and Macron said, this issue of limitation of third terms, it's, I know I can't use the, the term he used on TV, he says BS. If their own imperial master does not see any reason, does not see any cause, or does not see any problem with prolongation of terms, changing of constitution, being there forever, then that tells you where the problem is coming from. So again, African countries, it is not the problem of uh, coup d'etat. If we have a benevolent, you know, it's unfortunate for me to say it, but that's the truth. If we have a benevolent despot that comes there, meet the aspirations of the people, rule according to the aspiration of the people. We have military leaders in, in, in Mali today that are going after contract by contract with the Western power and said, this has to be renegotiated. We have military leaders that are cutting alliance with the imperial master. We have military leaders that are changing the geopolitical atmosphere by going into South-South corporations with the other countries that they can now use that as a bone of contention to resist this imperialist NATO North American led multi uh, uh, industrial complex that can withstand that. That is one thing we're shaping. Mr. David Lee said something, which I want to echo what he said. The truth is that these imperial powers are not going to give up easily. Let's not kid ourselves here. They are not going to give up easily. I already told you guys that when this coup took place in Niger, or even in Gabon, the French military council met to examine the situation. That tells you the gravity of what they're going to lose if this country get out of their column, of that column of imperialism. So if African countries, those regional blocs, can't really have the autonomy that they desire or they should have and can be able to stand up, gang up together, stand up against imperialism, I am telling you that's the way to go. It's true that, you know, military takeovers, it's not what anybody desires. It is not the ideal. But if they are the way that Africa is going to use to shake the status quo, I am telling, I will shock some of you that I have no problem with that. As long as we are not sharing blood and destroying property and killing people, if that is going to take military coup d'etat to shake the status quo that exists in Africa and dismantle this imperialism, and make sure that we do not return to the old order. It is a shocking thing that a group of countries, more than 15 of them, have their currency being named and controlled by one single country. And we are here talking about, oh, military leaders should not talk about whatever it is. I don't care. As long as these people are able to break this French hegemony of Francophone Africa, if it is going to take military leadership to do it, I'll go for it.